This is Kevin Pruitt with another episode of Rising Tide Startups. And my guest today is Juliet Staple. And Juliet, thank you for joining us on Rising Tide. Hi, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm delighted to be here and to chat to you today. So, folks, you are in for a treat today because this lady has, uh, has lived in a number of places. And, and it's really interesting. I mean, just listen really carefully to kind of those, some of the word choices that she uses. It's just, it is such a, it's a beautiful global version of English. So I, I really want you to listen closely to this. But Juliet, share a little bit about your background with the Rising Tide. Well, um, hi guys, my name is Juliet Stapleton. I am a social media content strategist, sometimes known as the queen of visibility. And this is all because I am encouraging people to show up and uh, stand out, but not stand out with anything fake or anything that they have to come up with, but just being themselves because I really believe that people buy into people and as business owners, we are often hiding behind our businesses, you know, not showing up. Uh, but really when we're talking about a attracting our perfect clients and really feeling fulfilled in our businesses, which happens with working through working with people, helping people who are our perfect match. And that is only possible when you're showing up as who you are. So this is what I'm all about. And I'm all about creating powerful content that supports this and helps you attract these perfect people that then, you know, fill your business with ideal clients, make your financial freedom dream come true, make your uh, location free business come true whatever you're dreaming of come true and this is so this is me in a nutshell so drill down a little more family where you live location where you were born that type of thing such a long story uh, i was we were just first. chatting before this podcast started and uh if i start telling my story there's so many buts but i will tell you this because i love that i'm a citizen of the world right i was born in ukraine but I'm not from Ukraine. My mom was there on holidays, right? I grew up in Estonia, but I don't speak Estonian. I'm actually Russian speaking. Um, I left um, Estonia in 1999. I went to travel. You know, I went, I had a calling. I needed to go west. And so I came to London and then I, I, uh, I got pregnant straight away. So my dreams of, you know, taking over the world from London kind of felt like they were, they were gone. And, but then I thought, okay, well, there's no way I'm going back. And I, uh, I, went, I came to Ireland and I was like, I will be very transparent about it. I was looking for a way to stay in Europe because Estonia wasn't part of the European Union um, at that stage. And I ended up coming to Ireland and having my baby here. I got a residency because of that. And I kind of got stuck here. But it was everything in life happens for a reason. So I met my other half. Uh, here and my daughter is uh, grown up into being a, like a really really talented academic who is now studying in, in the university here in Trinity College Dublin and everything always happens for a reason so 20 years later I am going back to Estonia which has developed and grown just like me so mm -hmm. amazingly that everything that in the 20 years that I've traveled around looking for who I am, looking for what I love and you know, what is, what makes me happy. And I made a list last year. I'm not joking. And everything on that list is right now available to me if I live in Estonia. So I'm wow. going back this year. And that's what kind of my, my, and I love this whole thing that, you know, when you are actually not putting yourself in the box too much, mm -hmm. who you are, and you open, you know, you open up, uh, amazing opportunities come in. And sometimes life can bring you back to where you started, even because, you know, you needed to go away and grow up and, sure. and experience something to really appreciate what you have. So that's what happened to me. So you, you mentioned Estonia. It's it, interesting because uh, that country is really unique um, in kind of the startup space, especially the online business space. I mean, they've got kind of, it, it's, it isn't, isn't Estonia the, the country that has kind of the e-visa that, uh, you know, it's like a, a online e-residency. E yeah. Can you touch on that just a little bit? Yes, absolutely. So this is what I absolutely love about Estonians um, as a very young nation. They only became independent in 1991. And it's a country that doesn't have a lot of natural resources. You know, they don't have the, the land is not fertile, it's all clay. You know, we have some wood, but we don't really, we can't really create this big economy. So what they did is they, they realized that the biggest asset they have is their intelligence. And they're highly 
you know, they, they, they uh, value education. They, they're very technical. You know, they really um, do things properly kind of mm -hmm. uh, people. And they also deserve to be known. And I think that they, they just recognize that, okay, we have, you know, it was the 90s and the internet came into our everyday life. And with the power of internet, they could um, they could basically sh show up as someone you know who is technical, who can be you know really um, creative. Uh, we don't in Estonia. We never had food culture. Right now, Tallinn, Estonia is like a capital of the food culture of Northern Europe oh, in yeah. general. It's so so good because. It's, it's, it's people who want to grow. They want to be recognized. They believe that in, in, no matter that they're a small nation, they deserve to be seen and for good reasons. And I absolutely love, there is such an energy of growth mm -hmm. in there. And yes, e-residency, which I, I don't have e-residency because I'm an Estonian citizen, sure. you know, so sure, I'm yeah. not allowed even yeah, though yeah, I live in yeah, Ireland, yeah. you know, but basically what they, what they want to give people is an opportunity to um, become digital nomads and travel the world and fulfill their dreams and do whatever they believe that they do, they can do or at least give it a shot, and no matter where they live, um, they could come and you know pay their taxes in Estonia and mm -hmm. be Estonian e-residents and while traveling the world. And I actually know people who have applied and received e-residency. Everything is so simple when it comes to startups and business right. and opening a bank account. You know, I went to uh, open a bank account. Now, I'm, not, I'm a resident of Ireland at the moment, mm -hmm. you know, right. so my address and everything is here. And it took me 10 minutes to open a bank account, to open a, a bank account that I will use for a business that they call an entrepreneur bank account, you know, um, without any complications. If I, when I move in to register my business, it will take me 15 minutes wow. with this bank account. I'm, I'm just, I'm not. So um, access to internet is in their constitution because everything is online. You know, everything mm -hmm. is done through your personal ID identification number. Um, and this helps, first of all, transparency. This right. is why it's such a great place. It's not, dodgy business is impossible to run. Everything is done very transparently. Everything is done on, online. Um, not as, as much cash business going on. And therefore, you know, there is a lot of systems in place that are simple. If you have an idea, if you have, there, there's a lot of support for startups there's a lot of nurturing and if you have an idea and you're prepared to work hard and put everything you know what you what you have in your heart into that there will be systems there to support you as well with that and it's amazing when you're in Estonia when in Tallinn so many things are around you whether they're you know artistic or food related or some other businesses online businesses global mm -hmm. businesses you know and just this whole idea of let's be creative and let's create something significant. And that's, that's what I, I really love about this country. That's yeah, why yeah. I'm now so excited to go back home. So, so if, who, would be, who would that fit? Like, is, is this somebody that is maybe a digital nomad from another country that wants to move to Thailand, wants to move to Estonia, and they can, they can actually have residency there while they're doing the business? Or are you talking about when they travel? Or what's, what's the distinction there? Yeah, e-residency is for people who don't actually live in Estonia. They can be, uh, so I, and, and I am not, now let me just have a, a disclaimer because mm -hmm because I don't have e-residency right. myself. I only know probably not that much more than you do because I, I you know, I heard about it or sure. a friend of mine got it, sure. but I go through a different, um, different route because mm -hmm. I'm a citizen. Right. But it is for digital nomads, which means that you're, it's not that you're going to live in Estonia. You don't need, to, if you want to move to Estonia, you don't need the e-residency. Um, unless you are not part of, European Union, right, then you exactly. probably need to apply for that. You know, yeah. there's different, um, but but you will have sim a similar thing as a resident of mm -hmm. Estonia, and yeah. you will pay taxes and everything inside there. But what I really like about the idea of e-residency, I have a, a, a friend of mine uh, who is Bulgarian citizen, and um, she is a coach who travels the world. She's not in she doesn't live in Bulgaria, and she she's able to be you know, to have her residency, new residency and run her business with all these really easy, really transparent, really well, like running like a well oiled machine systems right. that Estonia is offering for, for digital nomads and not dealing with the local 
complications yeah. with, you know, in some countries running a business is not so easy and starting up a business is not so easy. So anyone can apply for an e-residency, but it's particularly suited to people who want to travel, don't want to be, are not settled in the same place. Sure. Sure. Or they're living in a country that is completely, it's very difficult. I think when you're traveling is different to when you are a resident of the yeah. same country, because you know, if you're living in the same place, there could be other things you want to avail, uh, where if you are a traveler, then, it, you know, th some things are not as important to you. So digital nomads is where it's at, I think, with the right. residents. Right. I, I mean, but, I, yeah, <laughs> go ahead. But visiting Tallinn is a bucket list thing for everyone. That's, <laughs> I can promise you that. That's right. And she's now the president of the Estonian Tourism Board. So she has, has invited the world to come visit talents. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. I absolutely, you know, I can't wait. I can't wait to move because when I'm there, I am going to be such a huge ambassador. I actually I lived 20 years in Ireland and I was always reluctant to invite people to visit me because I feel like I have nothing to show where I am, where I'm, you know, geographically. And getting somewhere where I can show something is like way too far from me. In Estonia, it's going to change. You'll all have to come and visit and you'll all have to come and look me up and I'll show you the best places and the She's best now restaurants. I free Airbnb <laughs> at, at Stapleton Manor in town. <laughs> Well, you know, I could continue to ask you questions about the, the e-residency, but actually I would, I, 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 this interview is about you, not about how Estonia is, is inviting the world to their front door. But uh, so drill down a little bit more. You and I are going to step onto a, to a lift. We're going up 10 floors. Give me your elevator pitch about, you know, your, your business services and how that might benefit me. Well, what I can teach you is how to uh, look at yourself as a brand. So in addition to your expertise, in addition to what you do in a business, uh, what I can teach you is how to put you into together with your business as a brand and control it in a way that you attract the best possible kind of person that will resonate with you, who you are, appreciate and respect you. And through that, we'll want to have business with you. In fact, they will want to stay in your life in some sort of way forever. And that's what we want when we run businesses. We want people to come back to us and have return businesses and things like that. So this is where I come. I come in. <laughs> Very relational. So the whole idea is, is uh, like the relationship side of things, the really how to, how to brand yourself, but how to do it in a way that, that you're building rapport and you're, you're really showcasing yourself in the best possible light. Exactly, because you know, looking at yourself as a brand is uh, is basically controlling how people perceive you and thinking about what stories you're uh, what stories you're sharing. You do not need to become uh, to open up and the whole world knows all your private stuff. I'm an extremely private person, and unless I decide that these things are important to share, nobody knows what's happening in my life. But for us, it's important to create a, an impression. So, for example, what are your values? If integrity is important to you, it's important to say it. It's important to let others know because those people who value integrity, they will appreciate you and they will get drawn to you much more. Or, you know, if you're a dog lover, this is, an, this is where the kind of relationship stuff happens. Everybody's trying to show up as experts, but that's boring. You know, on social media, <clears throat> social media is a place where we hang out, right? We're not there to buy. We're not there to, even we're not really there to learn. Sometimes we do, but, you know, we're not there. We, we get bored with all this, you know, expert advice and, and, say, and ads. And well, we want to connect. So when we see a picture of a cute dog, that's where we connect. Or when we, you know, when somebody shares something that happened to them and you've lived through the same uh, story or the same experience that's where we connect yeah. so using those strategically to actually create that emotional connection that gets people excited about you first then out of those like a funnel right then out of those people who are excited about you there will be people who will be excited about what you are actually teaching they will need this in in their situation life situation business whatever you're offering and from that pool of people they will definitely be really really good loyal perfect people to work with you and so it, it is really a, a funnel and how to control this emotional connection, build the trust, 
build your authority to, to show up because people judge the book by the cover. So you have to show up as an authority, but not in a boring way, because, you know, in a party, when you have somebody who goes into a professor mode and starts loading, you know, information of others, <laughs> you will either try to run away from that corner of the room or you will see people with blank faces around them you know, dying inside. <laughs> so you don't want to be that. And this is this is what basically I think it's all about, you know, and, and it's a fun way. It's such a fulfilling and fun way. So many people are resisting showing up online. They think it's too time consuming. You know, they find all these excuses, you know, resistance kicks in. There is always resistance, but it's also really fun way and so fulfilling because you are really connecting to people who appreciate you. And don't we all want to be appreciated and loved oh, for sure. and looked at yeah, for with sure. some sort of like, you know, be respected. So, you know, this really helps. So, so walk us through kind of the transition. I mean, you didn't just wake up one day and decide I'm going to become the queen of visibility. I mean, so how did that you know, give us the, you know, kind of the short version of this is exactly how I ended up, you know, fitting into this stream of online business. Well, I, yes. So there was a two stage, it was a two stage process. Uh -huh. You know, I was always into, ever since I bought my first computer, I was, I loved the idea of connecting to, to people or information uh, on the internet, you know, internet blew my mind in 1996. I, I will never forget that. And I was always, you know, into this. I was, I was in a band. So I saw that this was the way to get more visibility, you know, build a website. Then in the in early 2000s, started building websites. Then some of the social media networks started popping up like MySpace and Debo and, you know, all the, they were not as big as Facebook, but there was, they started kind of happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Facebook happened in 2007 for me. And uh, ever since I, I saw how Facebook could um, really connect people you know globally so you location i i i am like a free spirit i don't like being in the same location all the time even though maybe i had to but with my life story but you know you can connect to people so in 2010 for example uh my husband who is a music producer um he put together this band and we entered a competition for uh, meteor awards in ireland which is uh, like grammys in mm -hmm. america you know it's the biggest it used to be the biggest music award and they put together they, they had a competition anyone could enter but you had to go through votes public votes a small little panel and then again public votes so it was three three step process the only way to do it was to get public votes and we ha we used facebook to connect to people and we couldn't believe at the very end of course they won wow. <laughs> at the very end we couldn't believe that we actually uh, raised something like 50,000 votes for this band this was band nobody knew with no following nothing it was a brand new band put together just for this competition from you know a college that my husband ran mm -hmm. and it, this showed me the potential so in 2012 fast forwarding a little bit uh, further i was in a situation where i lost all my income <laughs> and my job and everything and instead of like saying oh my god i'm such a victim and going you know ask for social welfare help i went in and registered as a self-employed i just had this feeling i said this is a good thing so i registered as self-employed i went to some people that i knew i said do you want help running your facebook page because i have experience i'm very passionate about this i can build relationships with your uh, clients offline clients online and i was really good at it so within three months i was back and you know back on track working and <laughs> with with small local businesses and for the next six years i worked with local businesses i live in a very rural small little rural area in ireland so in six years i ended up in a situation where i worked with every prominent business in every re industry that was represented and i don't like commuting i treasure my time so mm -hmm. i didn't want to look for more clients somewhere else and so that made me feel very stuck it made me feel very vulnerable and actually didn't give me a flexibility to choose who i wanted to work with so i basically took any project that came my way just you know because i had this insecurity about what if i lose one of the clients and i'll have no money and you know this this whole thing was very it was actually quite depressing so in 2017 there was a day when i realized one day that i am not actually running a business as a business owner even though i am self employed even though i'm 6 years saying that i have my business i'm still just a glorified employee mm -hmm. at the mercy of these few businesses that i'm running and i have a real cap there that i don't know how to prospect because everybody came to me through word of mouth because i was so good at my first few clients that i had 
and what do I do? And I don't want to work with people in the local area because they don't seem to know what I'm doing, so they don't appreciate me. And um, at that moment, something happened in our, in our lives as well that was a huge kick in the backside, and it was my husband got diagnosed with cancer. Mm. And at that moment, again, a moment where you think you're losing everything, I said, I'm going to instead of even focusing on him recovering, I'm going to focus on the life of our dreams. Like, what do we want to do together? And I somehow just blindly believing that this is going to happen, I said, I'm going to create a, an online business because if I have clients who will connect to me because they appreciate who I am and they will be better people to be in business with because they will appreciate me and they will know what I'm giving them and, and it will create a feeling of fulfillment for me, financial security for me, um, location free um, right. situation where I can just, you know, close my laptop and go and, you know, or, and most importantly, flexible hours. So if I decide that I want to go out for a coffee with my husband, I can just go. I mm -hmm. don't have any commitments and nobody's there, you know, counting my hours or, so it was such a big shift in my mind when I said to myself, I am going to do it because I deserve it. And it took me a while because visibility is not a microwavable process and right. you can't just, you know, you can't just create an online business in a flash you know there's so many uh, kind of very deceiving um, ways how people show up and they say oh yeah in six months I created a six-figure business but they don't tell you that they already had experience with yep. businesses they had systems in or place. a massive they had mailing so much list or something yeah exactly yeah yeah they had like a lot they probably failed a couple of businesses or they decided <laughs> to rebrand so this is just a new version of what they've been doing before whereas a lot of startups coming up uh, coming to to the business world and they don't know especially with the online world and especially in say coaching business and there's a lot of people with a big dream i want to help people and when you say to them okay so what systems do you have in place they have none they don't understand how to run the business they're dealing too much with resistances or you know mm -hmm. feeling not worthy getting paid enough or all these things instead of actually running a business and for me it was a huge learning curve because as i said six years i'm saying to everybody i'm running a business but hey i wasn't running a business as far as i'm concerned i i started my business in 2017 when i realized that i need to do something and it's been a hard journey because i didn't know how to do it you know mm -hmm. and it was and there was resistance and there yeah. was um but i thought to myself okay we need to build relationships you know i know i need to be visible i know i need to learn how to so visibility is one thing if you're not seen nobody will know you're there no matter you can be the best person person for the job and yet they don't know you're there they will go to that person that they see so i had to be visible so this was like it's non-compromising doesn't matter if i have time doesn't matter if i know what i want to talk about about um doesn't matter what comes into my head to talk me out of being visible you need to be visible you know that was and when i started doing it myself uh, after about three months i realized that i'm actually doing things very strategically even though i didn't do it deliberately but i have strategies and i started putting these strategies together and eventually i started teaching people so that's how my online business actually was born by first i became visible and then i i could teach people how to do this and that made my dream and over now fast forward to two and a half years um it's this is what created the queen of visibility as they say with thousands of students um across the globe you know i have students and clients and from chile to nova scotia and you know it's like it's insane it blows my mind how much we can do and yet it's exactly the same as fulfilling as amazing as working with people face to face in fact i think it's more convenient because i'm an introvert and i do prefer switching off zoom <laughs> <laughs> then being on my own rather than sitting there waiting for the meeting to end you know yeah. so there's loads of advantages in yeah. in this you know but it's very it's very fun fulfilling business gave me the free the flexibility and yes i can go out for a coffee with my husband anytime right. i want and he's right. well by the way so yeah, by focusing on that dream giving it all giving it all i don't even know what exploded now but i think it's maybe fireworks now because we're talking about that's exactly right that was a, affirming what you just said yeah miracles happen you know so this is what i yes i i uh, so this is this is what i encourage others to do because i've lived through this now one thing so that i've noticed bit, you know it's maybe 
You know, I just want to say real quick, one thing I've noticed just, just, you know, following you online is that not only are you visible, you are, you are consistent in your visibility. I mean, you have a brand that, that is, I mean, you, you're exactly right. You're very strategic and you're very consistent. You're very intentional in the way that, that things are branded. And, and when people see you, there is this, there's this uh, trust factor that's built because when they see you in, you know, saying different things or, or in different settings, there's still a consistent thread that is, that is all the way through everything you do that, that kind of ties everything back together. And that's, that's, uh, I mean, I know that your, your students, you know, that's probably one thing that you do teach too about that this, you know, you can, your content can be different, but you, there has to be some thread of consistency that, and, and uh, you know, timeliness in, in what you're doing. I think the most important advice I could give, and, and it's, it's something that sounds simple and a lot of people overthink, it's put yourself first in your branding and in your content. People buy from people. So show up as you and you have the courage to do that. Sometimes vulnerability, sometimes sharing stories. If you're putting you into your business in terms of visibility, you're going to win. Consistency, yes, it's hard. The struggle is real, guys. Uh, the resistance is real, even for me, you know, doing, if I need to do, say, I have a launch and I need to do daily videos, People resist doing videos even when they are used to them because it's a natural thing for our brain to try and protect us from doing pretty much anything. It doesn't yeah. like if, if, if you let our brain decide, we would be lying there like vegetables and not burning any calories. <laughs> so in a way, like this is all these things are the, exactly the same as if you are not as visible as me and you're going through these things. But the difference is that I don't use it as an excuse. I understand that if I'm not seen, I need to, you know, I, I, I will lose uh, the momentum. And so I implement strategies that make me look visible on those times where very naturally because we are we are you know we're beings that are alive beings on this planet all living beings have the times when they rest and times when they are they're active right so it's very natural for us as humans to have moments where we create or not moments periods where we create where we give our energy and then other ones where we contract and when we need to you know, experience some internal growth and it's very difficult to create when when you're experiencing that right. moment so right. the secret is to have strategies to have content that you can go to content that maybe you already created before because you know social media is so noisy people don't remember what you said three months ago you can take the post from three months ago four months six months ago and you can repost it and sometimes without even any editing you you know it could be a general kind of post that you were sharing right. a story or something you can just share it again we have watch parties we have other things you know we have i i do you know, because you have to build your authority obviously you are doing this you know as a business you want to show up and you want people to look up to you so i do a lot of interviews like this one mm -hmm. and i would be sharing the interviews from the past if i don't have anything scheduled or because that visibility needs to be maintained so that's where the strategy um comes in but yes the core is you and Therefore, it doesn't even matter. You know how many U-turns I took in my online business and direction? And, and uh, I was just even saying that maybe in the nearest future, I'm, I might not call myself the queen of visibility. Right. I might just go and do something slightly different just to make it even clearer to my ideal client what I do because clarity is important but it's okay because I'm still me I'm still Juliet Stapleton that's mm -hmm. not going to change I know who I am um you know and like at least I know who I am right now <laughs> that seems to be the glue for everything that I do that sure. as you mentioned that consistency sure. that's yeah, the that core consistent thread let me uh I want to take a little quick you know kind of chase a proverbial rabbit here just for a second so you know, if you are if you are online and as visible as you are and as ubiquitous as as your presence is online, how do you deal with those that that you know would would leave you really hateful comments or really negative feedback or whatever? How how do you? I mean, we're all emotive beings, and we you know we respond to you know one bad comment can can you know can do away with ten good ones, you know that type of thing. So how do you deal with that? That's true. That's true. Um, let me just put it in this, uh, in this shape. Everybody's brand is reflecting who they are. Mm 
Uh, some people are more polarizing than others. You know, I have strong opinions and yes, I can be polarizing in my opinions, especially about parenting, for example. I have unpopular <laughs> opinions that I stand by, you know, because I have proof that it works. But um, I don't, I am not a confrontational person, so I will not inspire confrontation um, on my posts. I am very lucky. I never had really, like, I, I do also block very easily people who are negative on my, say, sure. personal profile. I just block them. I don't give it a second thought because, you know, I, I, I come to everybody with love, but when they betray that love, that's it, you know, gone, yeah. because I don't want to be thinking. Yes, sometimes it hurts. Uh, sometimes it's, um, you know, you just need to, you need to think about what is happening here and not get sucked in to mm. negativity. There's other ways to keep your world online, you know, um, purer and more, more positive. Now, I'm not talking about like motivational quotes right, or anything like right. that when I'm saying positive because that's not, that's all sort of superficial as, as well. But you can, you have definitely control over who you're in contact with. So any negative people, if they're really stepping over the line, you can, you have absolute 100%, even if it's your brother or someone close, right? You can block them. Yep. You can follow them. You can snooze somebody for 30 days if you just get annoyed with them or, you know, if they're not really maybe commenting on your posts, but they're just annoying you in general and putting you in that kind of not nice Sure. state of mind sure. so you are in control of your newsfeed a lot of people giving and a lot of business owners they're sort of giving out about facebook is so negative but that's actually not true it's just that they engage with this negativity so facebook who doesn't have any bias it just looks at what you engage with and gives you more of that stop engaging with negative stuff right you won't get that in terms of comments as and trolls again if you're posting something that is polarizing which is actually good because that's where you're filtering people who are your people and who are not your people mm. even if you didn't know that yeah. you just need to accept I'll give you an example. For example, it's not really a troll example, but uh, one of my students who, you know, went through my um, programs and we were really, really connected and everything great. And then all of a sudden we found that, you know, we have, we have a disagreement or not disagreement. We do things differently when it comes to vegan lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, it was sort of like a dodgy situation because um, it's a real polarizing topic, you know, and, uh, <laughs> And how do you, I, I, I work with a, a hair salon nearby and they do my hair and I always, I'm always grateful. So I was promoting a, a, a product that they gave me, but I'm not that kind of person who checks the labels that much or gets sure. really bugged into what's in, in the products. And I, I'm not going to apologize or not for it because we are all different. We all have their, our own ways of living. But when those ways of living are not the same, you know, then you have a choice. And, you know, some cultures are more vocal as well. So mm -hmm. it depends on where you are in the world. You will yep. get people who are angry and louder about things. Or, and usually, you know, as well, if something triggers somebody, usually they have a problem. It's not your problem. So oh, what a, what a great if, point. Yeah. yeah what a yeah, great, it's like American politics. <laughs> yeah, don't take it personally. If somebody yeah. got triggered about something you said, and you didn't mean to offend this person, yeah. you just express who you are. Well, then you have a choice. Either you ignore or you block them if they're really negative to you because there's no need to have that around your yeah. content. Yeah. You know, um, or you ignore, or you ignore. Right. So ignore. I love the snooze block, button. Yeah, Facebook ignore, snooze button for 30 days. <laughs> snooze. Yeah, snooze them if, if it's their content. I love that. I clean up my, um, I clean up my news feed many times mm. uh, say a month like maybe once a week i sit down and i say okay or i see somebody and i i when i see somebody i say they don't bring value not only like it's not that they're negative but what they're saying i don't like this i don't want to see this i i straight away unfollow yep. them i don't necessarily yep. unfriend them right but i unfollow them yeah i don't need negativity in my news yep. feed that's uh, that is a that's a great way to handle though because we're all going to I mean if you're visible you're going to have people that that troll you're going to have people that that disagree depends, and, yeah depends on how polarizing your brand is so mm -hmm. I know some uh, online marketers and they use polarization they use it to sparkle conversation to sparkle engagement they thrive in it and they're very good at coming back and like pouring oil in the fire yeah. I'm not. My best comments come like two days later. I'm like, oh, I should have said this. You know, so I don't do that. I don't do conflict. So I am I'm very, very lucky. And what I do as well, when somebody trolls me and it makes me laugh because I have the little gesture 
part of my personality is like I, I love humor. I repost it and you know I'll make fun of it yep. uh, or something like that, you know. And um, I actually had a suicide thread on my business page that I found about a month after um, it was posted. Wow. <laughs> it was a person who wasn't. It was the only one ever. Yeah. But it wasn't a person who was well, you know. Right. You know? Right. It was definitely somebody who is like typical troll. Like mm -hmm. I was just a random person. Absolutely, I couldn't take yeah. that personally. Yeah. It actually makes me, made me laugh a little bit because that profile was still active. So I just assumed they didn't kill themselves and they were still alive. <laughs> and, and I did post it. I laughed because I said, yes, I have my first troll. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> I am somebody. I think you should always, yeah, you should always use humor. And yeah, yeah. but if it bothers you, I'm, just block them. My yeah. block list is huge. I don't like people bothering me. So. Yeah, I mean, it is, and it does affect you. I mean, even even negative content, I mean, has a has an effect on how we, you know, how how we go through our day or whatever. But now I could I could continue to chase these these questions just all day long. But you've got things to do, and and I and I really want to give you space here near the the end of our chat. Just really, I want to kind of segue into our rising tide micro course, and uh, but before you become the professor, and I just step out of the way and and let you share from your area of expertise and. You know, a short snippet of of uh, you know value that you want to provide to our listeners. But uh, Juliet, take it away. Excellent. So, guys, today I'm going to talk about visibility. That is not about creating posts. That's important, right? But actually, how do you really become visible? And you become visible by interacting with people strategically. So, I'm going to give you this 20 minutes a day, maybe less. I, it takes me sometimes like five minutes, but 20 minutes action plan, right? It's a strategy. I call it six five four, three, two, one. And um, it works very well if you can, just, it works very well on a personal profile because why am I not using business page for this? Because as a personal profile, you can reach out to other users. You can, you know, you can send personal messages. You, you can interact in groups so much more. As the business page, you can't do that. So I do encourage you to show up as yourself, use your personal profile for building your authority not to sell directly or you know bombard people with spammy posts but to build your authority right so what you do is you pick up a group of people that you'd love to become your clients you know if you can if you can't just use your friends randomly don't worry about it don't get hooked up but if you have like your golden pick pick a bunch of people maybe 20 people you know or maybe like up to 100 but that could make your 20 minutes a little expand a little bit and go to your new speed and start with number six right six reactions you need to get other people you know, know that you care so just randomly uh, like different people's posts like at least six posts that's where it starts um if there's obviously you want to like something you resonate with you don't need to um necessarily you know do it if you're if you don't agree with people um use hearts Hearts are nice. It's nicer to get a heart these days than a like. If somebody just gives me a like, I'm saying, yeah. you're either lazy or you really didn't like what I said. <laughs> you know? and, and so use the hearts. People want to be loved. Remember, everything is about love and status, right? People want to be loved and respected. So send them loves. And so six at least. The next is five. Five is very important because Facebook wants us to, I'm talking about Facebook here, guys. Facebook wants us to, um, create conversations and build relationships right so we're going to leave five comments on our friends post in the news feed and the more unfamiliar person seems the better you know even in your if you chose 15 20 people that you would love to make your clients you will notice that not all of them maybe are constantly interacting with you so you want to build relationships with these people there are always a bunch of people who are kind of like our ambassadors it could be your mom my mom loves commenting in all caps on my post. That's good as well, because that just boosts the algorithm a little bit as well. I'm not, you know, don't, don't shy away from friends and family. But you want to build relationships and make, make people who are potentially could have a business interest in, in what you're doing, right? You want to build relationships with them. Uh, so five comments, four. Four is a little bit, you know, we're going to now go into people's profiles. So push your comfort zone, go pick four people, go to their profiles and like two posts and comment on two other posts, right? It takes seconds. You 
comments are so easy. A lot of people get stuck on this, but it's so easy. You can say, thank you so much. This made my day. Oh, I needed to hear this. This is lovely. Thank you for sharing. You know, just thank people or give them something. You know, it's good. And by the way, um, if you have never spoken to this person, if you saw a post that it could be a post of a cat, yeah, it could be a post of a beautiful place where they went on holidays and you could say, oh my God, I love this place. Where is it? That's how you start a conversation, right? An opener. And if it was a meaningful post, this is the reason for you to reach out to them and say to them, hey, that post you posted about, you know, vulnerability, it really spoke to me. Thank you so much for posting it. Don't say anything else. Don't start sending links to your business page and group or anything. That will create so much. You know, people really appreciate when you reach out to them, but you actually don't want anything from them. And you let them decide whether they want to, to take it further in any way or ask you any questions. So this is what you do. You go to four people, right? So, and four again, four, for two reactions, two comments, you can do four comments if you want to. Anyway, play with number four. That was number four. Now, the next one is an engagement boosting thing. You're going to go to your own personal profile and you're going to go to older posts. When you're on your personal profile on the computer and you start scrolling, you will see on the top left corner, a kind of like a search thing appears and you can choose posts even from last year and any kind of months. Go into your older posts pick three posts and comment or reply to somebody's comment. You will be surprised. I've revived posts from two years ago just by going there and, you know, commenting, replying to a few comments that's already in existing comments. And of course I go to posts that did well. I can see by the engagement that I had before. And I'm every time by the next day, within the next 24 hours, I see new comments on this old post, new from, you know, people who did not, interact with me or didn't even know me then. So it goes back into the top of newsfeed. So that's another way to, for you to be visible, even if you didn't post something. And if you are completely, you have like writer's block, which can happen, or maybe, you know, for some reasons you have no time to sit down and create content. That's another way for you to be visible with your content to new people. In what, one minute? So it's, it's a very, very easy way. That was number three. Number two, we are going to build relationships. So we need to tag two people. Now, two people, um, what, could, what can you do here? This is really good for trust building and authority building. You can share maybe a client testimonial, or you can say thank you to a client or student potential client sometimes for maybe inspiring you to do something and tag them. People like being tagged when it's authentic. We don't like being tagged when, you know, it's like Juliet Stapleton and 92 others were tagged on the post that somebody is doing a program. I, I absolutely, I, that infuriates me. Used to infuriate me even more. And now I don't do anything about it before. I'd be leaving nasty comments, but don't do that. It's a waste of time. Uh, so two is enough. You know, you can, you don't need, to, you can post maybe one post and tag somebody. And the other one, go into a, like one of those old older posts while you're commenting you can combine these things that i'm teaching you right so you can you can tag someone else and bring them into the conversation you know if it's relevant and it's if you think about it it's all you always will find a reason to tag somebody and say hey did you see this what do you think you know you can always find this it's only it's only overwhelming and it seems impossible when you're not doing it. When you start doing it, you open up the door to the world of creativity. So it's all brilliant. And we are already on a two, right? So the last one is number one. And this is where you create your post. Go live, you know, or write a long story post. People, even if you think they don't read, your perfect people will read posts that are so long that you wouldn't even think that anybody will have time to read this. They will, because the right people, they will want more of you. This is what happens when we create a, an emotional connection with, with our audience. They just want more of you. They will buy your products and your, your programs and everything just because they want more of you in their lives. This is partially like it happens. I can see this. And that's what I've noticed in me because I analyze myself. I'm like, why did I buy this course again? I didn't really need it. Why did I buy this product again? And it's always about me getting excited about people behind the brand or you know the personalities you know i i'm sold like this because i'm a very emotional person and you know and so when you're showing up so about 
you know, energy and, and exchanging this energy. And so by using this strategy, so we have this six reactions, five comments, you know, go to four people and, and interact with them. We have uh, go to the older post, reply to three comments, tag two people and do one live video or write a post. If it's a long story, it's great. If it's not a long story, if it's just a, like one question, like what color socks are you wearing? That was one of my most engaging posts in 2018, believe it or not. <laughs> Everybody felt like not only they had to inform me about the color of socks, they sent pictures. You know, it was insane. It went insane. But that's, that's still visibility, right? And yeah. it's building relationships with people because we're not on social media to buy. We're there to hang out. Let's hang out. And we'll see, you know how much business is done over like a dinner <laughs> or cocktail party? Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. So this is my mini course. I, I love it. Uh, the six, five, four, three, two, one, 20 minutes a day plan to sh really show up and be visible online. I mean, I'm going to have to come up with a, with a shorter title than that, but what a great. I call it fearless course. daily Facebook, 20 minutes action plan. Oh, that's very long. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't need to. I, that's why I'm not on Twitter. I do not do short form <laughs> of anything. <laughs> Well, Julia, thank you for, for taking the time just to uh, kind of kind of wrap up our, our chat today with, the, with this great value. And is there um, what, one other thing I, I did want to touch on that I, that I hadn't asked you earlier that it's really interesting because, I mean, you know, we talked about you being having this linguistic, this global linguistic, you know, vocabulary, whatever. So English is, was not necessarily your native heart language. So but you create virtually all of your content in English. What what? You know, how do you do that? This is something that is uh, stopping so many amazing people because they're afraid that they're not good enough or their English is not good enough or maybe they have a strong accent. Or, But at the end of the day, I there was a big shift in me when I realized that people love my, me and, and when I make mistakes and come up with new English words or, you know, use bad grammar or emit all the articles or whatever you need to use, I don't use them. Now, when I write, of course, I use Grammarly because otherwise <laughs> <laughs> I am like the queen of typos and the queen of, but, you know, there is, there is a big um, embracing the fact that, that this is an excuse if, you, if you're not English speaking to use English to connect to other people. Embracing that will give you so much freedom. This is what happened to me. You know, I didn't think I was a writer. Right now I'm published in so many huge online publications. You know, I'm constantly writing. I'm constantly being asked to be a guest writer. And I love writing. This is how I express myself now in English. You know, I don't write in Russian, which is my native tongue. But it, I had a huge block about it because it's, you know what it is? It's allowing yourself just to be successful. Yeah. That's what it is yeah. because I wasn't allowing. Why? Because I, one of the excuses was, yeah, it's not my first language. So that means I am not allowed. Mm -hmm. And this is something that's important. I think when you are, if, you, if English is not your first language, uh, don't, don't be, don't hesitate to try and express yourself. If you're, obviously, if your English is not good enough, then you can go and study it. It's worth it because this globally right now, English is the language. You know, I'm moving to Estonia now and, and there's two populations. There's Estonian speaking and Russian speaking kind of two um, core population um, groups. And they speak English to each other sometimes. And it's great because before it was like created tension that people didn't speak each other's language. And now there is just connectedness and, and you know, there's much more love between people in a way, you know, that's sort of like a real human connectedness. Sure. And, you know, so we just need to embrace this. Uh, but I am sure, and this is what I see that even if you can communicate, if you speak, you know, to other people in, in English, um, and your fluency is just when you're not constantly looking for words, right? So, so fluency is actually much on a, comes on a much lower level mm -hmm. than we think. Try and communicate with, I had people from, like I had one of the students from Holland. She didn't even have very good uh, English. And yet, you know, she was empowered enough to go and get published in, in, in a print magazine with an article where she shared, because what she shared was more important. What, right. she, what she shared would empower and inspire people to change their lives. And that's what's more important than how eloquent her language was. 
What a what a great way to wrap up our chat today. I I, uh, I love that, and I I would certainly encourage, you know, anyone that if English is not your native language, that that uh, it, it's a it's still amazing that that you're attempting to, you know, I mean, obviously you you have a an incredible command of the English language, but I mean, people that that don't have such a good command, I mean, just just encouraging them to to step out and and there's something sometimes endearing about you know, even grammatical mistakes. And I, mean, I remember when we were, you know, we lived in France for a little while and, and to, we were learning French and, and sometimes they would say, oh, you, you speak a, you speak of my language with the accent, uh, with, with the American accent. I'm thinking, do you not see the irony here that you're speaking English with a French accent? Yeah, but you know, French are like guys, if you're, if, no, okay, if you're French and you're listening to this, I don't take it personally, but you guys, French are, you know, you do not take prisoners. So in all fairness, you could be to, to, to people who try and speak French. But it's true. It's, you know how endearing it is when you meet a person and they try to speak your language and they make all these funny mistakes. Yeah. And it's just so funny. So we connect through humor. Absolutely. Embrace this. Yeah, Embrace exactly this. right. Exactly right. What, well, as we, as we wrap up today, just, I mean, I love the way you just can you know, just embrace it. I mean, that, that if there's a motto of, of what you've talked about through the, the, the entire interview, that this may be a great way to wrap up. But where's the best place to find you online? The best place is look me up on Facebook. Just type in Juliet Stapleton. You'll see either my personal profile. You can send me a friend request. I am kind of hitting that, you know, the famous, no, I've hit famous the 5,000 5, friends yeah. limit. I'm, I don't make those posts, but uh, I am there. So follow it because that's where my most, I, I use my personal profile for all my content. It has the best reach. I can see what content works and then I repurpose it everywhere. There is a business page as well. And the best thing for you is to join my group, Social Media Visibility That Gets Clients. When you're joining the group, make sure you answer the questions and leave me the email address. And that's where I'm going to send my 20 minutes fearless daily Facebook plan. Great. Yeah. And we'll have, you'll have the PDF version of that. And, uh, you know, she, she is very engaging online and, and she's a lot of fun to follow guys. So make sure that you, you do, you touch on that. We'll make sure that's in the show notes, but Juliet, it, it's been a delight to, to engage with you today. Thank you for taking the time and just playing your part in helping all boats rise in a rising tide. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you for having me.